Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So, we've been growing pigs now for, this is our, this is our third year? Yeah, this is our third year. And we've always made the claim that our pork chops, or any of our pork products actually, are better than anything you can buy in the store. So today, we're going to put that to the test. We're going to make this as fair a competition as we can. We're going to try to give those store-bought pork chops every chance that we can give them to shine uh, and see how they do against what we grow here on the farm. So hang out with us for a little while. We're going to go to the grocery store. We're going to pick out some of the best chops they've got. We're going to come back. We're going to pick out a couple of our chops that are comparable in size. And uh, we're going to cook them up. We're going to do a taste test. Uh, and we're going to do some different tests with them along the way and see how things flush out. So if you're interested to see how a homegrown, farm-raised, locally produced pork chop compares to one of the mass-produced, CAFO-fed pigs, then stick around. You're going to want to see this. So hang out with us for a little while. All right, so we're at a local to us grocery um, it's a fairly nice store um, so we're gonna go in and see what they've got uh, in the pork chop world um, and we're gonna buy the best thing they got so we're not gonna we're not gonna skimp on this we're not gonna just cheat get the cheapest thing that they've got uh, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get the nicest thing that they've got in the pork chops and uh, see uh, see what it's like all right so we're in Lowe's Foods I shouldn't say that, but we're in a grocery store close to home, and here's their pork chops. This is 1.185 pounds, 4.49, four dollars and 49 cents a pound. So two of these are five dollars and 32 cents. So you want to get these and then get one of those others out of the case. That's fine. So we're going to get a pack here, and then we're going to go over to the meat case and get one out of there just to try to make it a fair fight. So we're gonna get these and we'll go over the case, the meat case at the uh, meat counter and we'll uh, get one there as well. Yeah, they'll, they'll be the same. So the thick cut here is the same as what's yeah, in uh, the same, same pour. Uh, they were probably even cut at the same time. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. So, okay, great. I got a couple of those down there, that yeah. works. All okay, right. thanks man. Yeah. Okay, so we talked to the butcher behind the butcher counter, I guess it's a butcher. And he said that the pork chops they had in the case there are the same as what is in the uh, in the cooler down the aisle. So we got we got basically the same thing. And then just was kind of curious over here. They've got some thick cut bacon there. Looks like it's had a little seasoning put on it. And their bacon is nine ninety nine a pound, seven ninety nine a pound with the rewards card. So okay. Okay, so you saw us buy these. Can't believe that I bought them, but anyway, here we are. I'm trying not to be biased. I know I want to say subpar pork chop, but anyway, substandard. But anyway, here we go. So these are the ones that we bought. That's not, Sandra says it's not biased at all. But anyway, this is what we bought at the grocery store. Um, and these are thick cut chops and they weigh 1.185 pounds or $4.49 a pound and they were $5.32 for two of those okay so there's our there's our store-bought chops now here this is our homegrown chops and we tried to make this this as verified as possible and we are 1.12 pounds versus the 1.185 so you can see we're we're really, really close on size. So these are ours. And I'm trying not to let the light give you any kind of um, um, bias on this, but you can see the difference in color on these chops. Let's swap sides here. So, you know, there we go. So you can see the difference in color on these. Thickness wise, we might be just a little thicker, but we'll. We'll check that here in just a second. So this is the packaging. As you can see, this is very nice. It's got the white background. It's got the 
um, drip pad in there. It's labeled all natural pork. Somewhere on here, yeah, there. Um, born, raised, and slaughtered in the United States. Well, that narrows it right down. Um, to whereas these, born, raised, and slaughtered within 30 miles of where they were born, raised, slaughtered, and to be sold. So price-wise, we are expensive. Uh, we're more expensive than what they are, $13.49 a pound. So this is two chops, $15.11. So, all right, so here's the plan. We're gonna take these out of the packaging and we're gonna weigh them uh, on an independent scale, on our scale. And then we're gonna vacuum seal these things into a bag. And we're gonna put them in what's called a sous V. And I'll post a link to one of these uh, in the description down below. These things are awesome. <clears throat> so what we'll do is these pork chops will be individually sealed. Well, they'll be sealed. The two store-bought chops and then our two chops will be sealed. They'll go into the sous vide and they will be cooked to 135 degrees. Is that right? We're going to cook them to 125 degrees. They will be consistently cooked throughout. We'll take them out of the sous vide We'll weigh them again to see how much loss we had, if we had any loss in the cooking process, and then they'll go on to the grill. And so we'll do a test at each step along the way to see how they compare, size, color, and then you guys will just have to take my word for it on taste. I hate them when I have to taste these pork, cho these pork chops after a while, but I'll taste these too for science. So anyway, that's the plan. So uh, let's get these babies sealed up and uh, see how they turn out. It'll be interesting. Okay, so let's take these out of the package and kind of do a little bit of an evaluation on them here. So these are our store-bought chops. And again, pale in color. They're very firm. And these have been... Um, these have been in our refrigerator for a, about three days um, from the store, and they're really, really firm. Um, the fat is about a, maybe a quarter inch fat on those. So, and then this one's about the same. It's almost like they're that one. It's almost like that other one's still semi-frozen, but this one is a little softer. So. Okay, there's the two store chops. <clears throat> now let's open up the two farm chops and see. Let's get another plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it work. A what? Mm -hmm. Green plate. Green plate. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the white to sort of keep the color neutral. All right, and so here are the farm chops. They are much more tender right out of the package. And we took these out of our freezer last night and put them in the refrigerator. So they were in the refrigerator in the same spot as these others. They had been, the, the store-bought chops had been in the refrigerator for about two days. And they still feel like they're even partially frozen. These came out of the freezer last night and they are much, I mean, much more tender. Fat cap little bit thicker on these not much um, fat looks a little more yellowish uh, a little more of a flesh color as opposed to the others which are pretty and I think this feels totally different See, the fat coloring is uh, is different on those this one's a little more flesh color where that one's more white so all right so let's seal them up in a bag um, with the vacuum sealer and then we'll get them ready to go in the sous vide. Yeah, we we'll need to weigh them. Yeah, I gotta weigh them. Okay, so the all right. First, we're gonna weigh them. So Sandra's gonna put us a plate on there, and then we're gonna tear the weight so that we're zeroing out. Got the camera over here, so you can see. See if we can zoom just a little bit. See if we can zoom just, there we go. 
All right, so first are our two farm chops. 1.13 pounds. 1.1 1 pound 1 pound 1.3 ounces. ounces. 1 pound and 1.3 ounces. Yeah, got it played off. So one pound, 1.3 ounces, and then our store chops are one pound, 2.2 ounces. So about an ounce over the farm chops. So these guys are a little bit, a little bit heavier. All right, let's bag them up. Do what? They feel real firm. They feel really firm. It's interesting. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to tell the difference, but should we should we mark them somehow? Well, I don't know. I guess we could put a permanent marker on Put a sharpie marker or something on them. Okay. Yeah, let's do that just to <clears throat> that way folks won't think we're trying to pull the old switcheroo on them here. All right. Got them bagged up. Back. Get them back and see. All right. Two farm chops here on the bottom. And Sandra's so going to mark them with just a blue mark. Okay. Tell you what, write number two on those just in case. Number two. Number two. All right. Perfect. All right, before y'all freak out thinking he's got a vac master in his house, this is one that we bought to do our chicken processing with, and it's just up at the house. So we're going to vacuum seal these guys. It's going to be here all winter. Okay, so we got the chops sealed um, in the va in the vacuum seal bags, and again, you can see clearly which ones are the farm chops versus the ones that are the store bought chops. That's not a natural color. Pork really shouldn't look like that. That's more the color that pork should be. So they're sealed in the bags. They're going to go into uh, this container with the sous vide. And what this machine does is it heats the water to a very consistent temperature. Um, and we're going to do it at 125, right? Yeah. We're going to heat them to 125. And that cooks whatever's in those bags all the way through to a very consistent temperature without overcooking. Now, a lot of restaurants will use these. Um, and they'll have, primarily, with, I think steaks is one of the more popular items that they use it with. They'll have a box that's got rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, etc. So whenever a customer comes in, they order a steak, pull it out of the sous vide, open the package up, toss it on the grill for searing, and then they'll send it out. This is a super way to cook your food. We've used the sous vide for a number of years. This is a great way to do steaks, chops, that kind of thing. Put it in the sous vide, let it cook during the day, and then in the evening whenever you're ready to... Uh, ready to fix it on the grill it's uh it's a quick easy way to get your grill stuff it's already cooked throughout again you get a nice consistent temperature so you know exactly what the internal temperature of your food is all right so we're going to set this on so you turn it on and it comes up in celsius so change it to fahrenheit this is what you're setting the, the water temperature at so we're going to dial it back to 125 And hit the set button. And this is the number of hours you want it to run. So we're going to set it for eight, even though they won't be in there that long. Hit the set button again. And this just tells you how long they've been in there. This one counts down, this one counts up. And right now, the water in the container is at 110 degrees. So then we hit the hold this button down. Remember. 
gets to 125 it'll start beeping and that's when we'll put the meat in. them cook? We'll let them go about four hours. Okay. And then we're going to You can let them go all day and they won't get over 125 degrees. That's the beauty of this machine is you can put something in it in the morning and come back after going to work in the evening and it will be at 125 degrees and that's as, that's as done as those pork chops will get in that water. And they'll be 125 degrees from edge to edge, all the way through the middle, all the way around. And then we're going to put them on the grill. And then we'll put them on the grill. All right. All right, so we'll come back after they come out of the sous vide, before they go on the grill. We'll weigh them again to see how much weight they've lost, if any, during this cooking process. And then we'll cook them on the grill and uh, see how they do. Weigh them again and see what uh, see if there's been a difference in the weights. I got the number on. Yep. So this is a number one. So this is one of the grocery store chops. No, that's one of ours. Number one is ours. Number two is the grocery store. Okay. Yeah. Number one. These are ours. Okay. So it looks kind of like the fat on these grocery store chops melted inside of the package a little a little more than ours did. Don't know if that's a big deal. Okay. Alright, so these are the farm chops. They still are a little darker than the grocery store chops. Both of them have been cooked. They've all been cooked evenly the same. The, the, the grocery store chops are still really, really firm and dense. They feel a lot more dense than the farm chops. These have got a nice springy texture to them. These are more firm. Even around the even around the edges they're more they're much more firm. I mean there's a they feel really they do feel really different. Okay. So I know the light's not very good. <clears throat> so we'll turn the scale on and put our plate on. We'll tear that. Give it a second. <laughs> okay. All right, so first the farm chops. 15.95 ounces. So they did lose a little bit. 15.95 ounces. Do you remember what they were? We'll, we'll I'll put the, I'll put a uh, graphic up on the screen. So they're 15.95 ounces. 
and then <clears throat> the store chops are one pound and 0.9 ounces so still probably rationally about the same size as what they were when they went in so everything's cooked everything's cooked consistently 125 degrees all the way through so we're going to put these on the grill and uh, then we'll do the taste test we're going to cook these on a kamado joe just a ceramic style um, cooker this is the little joe is that right the little joe and then we've got the big joe <clears throat> so here's our chops farm chops over here on the right store chops here on the left so there's a little salt and pepper on them And then how long are we gonna let them go per side? Uh, probably four or five minutes because it's not very hot. Okay, so they'll go four or five minutes per side. Then we'll take them off and see how they're doing. Pork chop showdown here. Okay, so the chops are done, and these are the store chops, and these are the farm chops. So let's weigh them one more time and see if we had any additional loss. So we've teared a plate, and the farm chops lost a little bit more. They're now at 14.3 ounces. All right, and we'll trade those out for the store-bought chops and they are now one pound and one ounce so they gained a little gained just a little weight didn't they that's crazy so anyway not much change in the in the uh, store chops but we did lose a little bit of weight on the farm chops so if we look at the color we can see that the farm the store chops are still pretty pale farm chops do have a little more color fairly firm texture but not overly firm and these actually seem to have softened up a little bit over what uh, what they were initially so now for the best part let's do the taste test Yeah, it's really. Yeah, what that is. Yeah. So that's the store chop. Really white, pale in color. Make sure I'm using it in the shop. Really white, pale in color. It tastes like salt and charcoal. It does taste like char salt and charcoal. But the meat doesn't seem to have a whole lot of flavor. No, the meat, no, the meat doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. It tastes more like 
what it was cooked on and how what it was cooked with being the salt. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. See difference in the color. Yeah. <clears throat> difference in the color. I don't know if it's showing up very good. Let's walk over to the chopper. So that's the farm chop. You can see a lot of color through here versus the store chop. I mean, it's just pale all the way through. Back up and you kind of see the difference between the two. That's interesting. The farm chop kept the color and the pale store chop never did gain any color. On the farm chop. The meat's got a whole lot more flavor there. You can still taste the salt and the charcoal, but it's not overpowering. It's not the only taste there is. Hmm. All right. So a real interesting thing here is the color in the meat. And that's the farm chop on the left versus the store chop on the right. And if you back out, you can see a real difference in the color of the meat. Um, the farm chop has kept a lot of the red color. It looks nice. It's got good texture. Versus the, far, the store chop, which has remained pale and white. Kind of a gummy texture a little bit. And it tastes a lot like the charcoal and the salt. Whereas, again, the farm chop's got more of a pork flavor to it. It has taste. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these things. Um, yeah, we we'll give them to the chickens. Maybe the chickens will eat them. But uh, here's the, the final product. A couple of nice farm pork chops. We fixed, roasted some uh, sweet potatoes, some homegrown carrots, and some homegrown uh, butternut squash in the oven with some salt, pepper, honey, and cayenne. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Super simple. And then some of our homegrown canned green beans so um in the end is the is the price difference um worth it uh we certainly think so a couple reasons number one the taste the flavor the texture i mean it's just a much better pork chop than what you get at the store and then knowing where it comes from how the animal was raised how it was treated and uh what went into uh growing and supporting a local business you know we think that there's a lot of a lot of value and importance in that so Happy with the way they turned out. So probably one of my favorite videos to do because we get something good to, good to eat out of it. But uh, again, you know, we just think this is these are much better pork chops. We've eaten we've eaten a lot of pork since we uh, since we started raising them, and um, we just think it's a it's a superior product. And again, we're we're excited on those weeks whenever folks come back and say, hey, that was the best pork chop, ribs, bacon, sausage, whatever it was uh, that I've ever eaten. So. Um, anyway, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to post a link to a couple other videos over here, other stuff we've got going on. Hit that subscribe button, follow along with us, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.